Hello friends, worried that my dead ancestors watch me while I'm pooping here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy in which we're going to be talking about the hero that I'm pretty sure is the current best offlaner in Dota 2. Uh, so as you can see here on the screen, uh, I have a hero tier list and this is something that I've remade uh, ever since they put in the patch where you could change your hero pick screen. I try to keep this as updated as possible. All of these C-tier heroes, I'm not sure if they're actually within the C-tier. I just know that they're possibly good, and I have yet to put them in their uh, category because the patch was just released. But one thing that I am absolutely certain of, it's that this Sand King hero is currently back to being broken. He is probably the single best offlaner right now if you want to spam something to gain MMR. I see Universe playing this. I see a lot of other offlaners playing it. I've played it and it feels really good. This is an excellent hero and I would highly recommend learning it. And that's what this video is going to be about. It's a Sand King guide. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So first and foremost, what skills and items should you build on Sand King in the current patch? So the general rule of thumb is you want to have Sandstorm maxed out as soon as humanly possible. Worst case scenario, level 8, max it out because this allows you to sit in any lane and nobody can contest you. I've even seen a lot of people go for Burrow Strike and Sandstorm max and completely ignore the other abilities because generally you do what you want to do as early as possible when you have those two abilities maxed out. If somebody walks into your Sandstorm, you Burrow Strike them, they will discord them, they have to run away, you don't need Epicenter, you don't need Caustic. But with that being said, a lot of people are experimenting with going early points in Caustic right now. Some people will go for a 2-0-1 build, then max out Sandstorm if they have something like a Lina or a Lashrak that they can set up for and pressure a lane really hard. People are even going for Caustic at level 1 if you're against some useless like Anti-Mage or Faceless Void, some melee hero that's going to get pressured really hard by it. So feel free to experiment with it, but only one point and make sure that you're maxing out the Q and the W after that. At level 10, you go for the 200 health talent. 20 movement speed's not that bad if you want to gap close and you want to run around the map. But generally, Sand King having more HP is great because one very effective way to play this hero is to go into fights, use all your spells, and soak a bunch of damage. Uh, level 11, level 12, that's when you want to get your ultimate. You can sometimes get it a little bit earlier if you think that you have some other hero that can set up for it. Uh, however, a lot of the time you don't really need it when you have that other hero because they provide damage to kill people in your Sandstorm, so you don't necessarily need it. At level 15, you go for the 40 Sandstorm DPS. I've never seen anybody go for the Epicenter Attack Slow. Uh, after that, you go for the uh, 10 Armor at level 20. You don't really need the Epicenter Pulses because at this point in the game, you should have a carry that's doing damage. Uh, after that, level 25, you go for the 50% Sandstorm Slow and Blind. I've never seen anybody go for the other talent because the 50% Blind and Slow is an absolute menace to deal with in late game. People need Monkey King Bar to deal with you, and even still, they're standing in a Sandstorm that does damage, and it slows, so it's a huge pain in the ass. What you want to build first, two Sentry Wards, so that way you can deward their Sentry Ward, guaranteed. Uh, two Tangos, one Mango, because you're going to use it for Burrow Strike, and then Stout Shield. Rush to the side shop to get a Quelling Blade as soon as possible, followed by a stick or boots. After that, build into the Veil of Discord. Once you have the Veil, you can sit in any lane. No hero can walk into your Sandstorm because they'll die. Uh, you want a bunch of Clarity. If you have seven Clarities in your backpack on this hero, it's perfectly fine because you will use them. After that, you want to build into a Blink Dagger. If you can be greedy, skip Tranquil Boots to opt to go for uh, travels later on into the game. But in this particular game, I was against an Invoker. He was throwing a bunch of, bunch of shit into my Sandstorm. So I was like, all right, I need to be just surviving in the Sandstorm. So I built the Tranquil Boots. After that, Yule Scepter is the item that I see a lot of Sand Kings going for. Enemy team runs into your Sandstorm, they dust you, you Yules, they need a second dust, and a lot of the time they won't have it. After that, Lotus Orb is the item of choice for a lot of Sand Kings. Same uh, reasoning as the Yule Scepter, except you can use it on your team, it makes you a little bit tankier. Uh, then after that, you go for Ethereal Blade. Uh, you can also go for a Sheep Stick if you feel like you don't need the damage, or you don't need the Ethereal Blade to uh, save somebody on your team from physical damage. But in this particular game, there's a lot of physical damage on the enemy team, so I opted to go for the Ethereal Blade. Speaking of skills, I'd like to do a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that is Skillshare. So I'm super stoked that Skillshare is sponsoring quite a few of our videos because I genuinely like their product a lot. And the reason for that is because about a year after university, I had this terrifying realization that I wasn't getting smarter. I was about the same intelligence as I was a year ago. And the reason for that is because I wasn't being spoon fed this information through the structure that is school that I've had for 20 years of my life. 
So I made it a goal to watch more documentaries, to read more, and to essentially learn from experts. And that is what Skillshare is. It is, it is a combination of many, many guides and tutorials from experts in their fields, from anything from game design to, to art to productivity. I've been watching something on productivity. So if you have that same fear that I do, that you're not getting smarter or you just want to get smarter quicker, then Skillshare is absolutely there for you. And uh, there's a two month free uh, link in the description for Skillshare. So if you want to give it a try, check that out. And anyway, back to the video. On Sand King, there are four phases in which you're going to repeat in every single game, possibly at different timings, but they happen in every single game of Dota. Uh, and the very first phase is one of the most crucial phases to understand because a lot of people will feed on this hero in this first phase because Sand King is one of the weakest heroes in Dota during this phase, but incredibly strong during all of the other phases of the game. So the very first phase on Sand King that you want to pay attention to is levels 1 through 3. Until Sand King's about level 3 or level 4, maybe even level 5, a lot of the time he's very weak up against a lot of lanes. My recommendation is if you are playing Sand King, you want to make a plan for getting through the first 1 to 3 levels. And one of the best things that you can do, worst case scenario, if you don't really have an idea of whether or not you're supposed to win a lane is set up right here to cut the second creep wave and give your support the first wave for free and then you drag this wave all the way behind your tier uh, your tier one if you're on the radiant off lane if you're on the dire off lane you just drag to in front of your tier one maybe even into it and what happens then is that screws up the whole lane equilibrium the next equilibrium will be right here where it's a lot easier to not feed and then you get level three and then all of a sudden we get into the second phase of sand king which we'll cover uh, in this particular game, however, I was trying a sort of different tactic where you go for Caustic first. The reason I did this is because there are two melee heroes against me and I simply uh, drag the creeps with creep aggro mechanics and hit the creeps and push them in with Caustic Finale. And what this does is it doubles up the creep wave, which makes it so that the enemy team cannot pressure me, even though this is when they should be pressuring because this is when Sand King is weak. I walk through, grab the second creep wave, drag it to a can. So the next phase of Sand King, and this is where things get a lot more fun to play the hero, is when you have uh, level two in the Sandstorm, maybe even level three, it depends. And you essentially want to rotate between uh, diving behind the tower to cut and drag creep waves to creep camps, and then you farm creep camps as well, so you just get double the amount of farm, uh, and then diving and pressuring under towers. And then once you come back from getting bounties or you know doing something, let's say the supports pressure you off the, the creep wave and you can't cut anymore, you just go to the lane and you make sure that you're not you're not losing any creep waves, because you don't have to, because at this point the life stealer, for example, can't do anything against me. But once you push in the creep wave, then you want to go to the very next one and cut. And the reason that you do this is because you're going to be getting twice the amount of farm, twice the amount of XP. And if you want to pressure this hero that is going to be free farming out of the tower, you can just do that after killing the creep wave. So now we get to phase three of Sand King. And this is one of the most boring but most effective play styles in all of Dota. And I imagine if you've seen any Sand King games in TI9 or any other tournament, you've seen Sand Kings do this because it is just so cancerous to do this, and not many other heroes can do it to the same degree that Sand King can. But essentially, phase three of Sand King is you pay very close attention to the health of this tier one and this tier one, so your safe lane and your mid tower, and you defend them relentlessly with no memeing. So what I mean by no memeing is if you come down here and defend this, you don't walk up here, you just sit here, put your sandstorm, and then walk into the trees and plan an escape route. So if the enemy team comes to you, make sure that you've quelling bladed trees that you can hide under, make sure that you know where you're gonna burrow strike to so you don't freak out and burrow somewhere stupid. Just make sure to make yourself as unkillable as possible, and I assure you, you will win a ton of Dota games by the enemy team being like, we have to kill the Sand King, we can't get this tower, we know this is the tower we're supposed to take, they dive you, your team TP's in, they take a ton of damage from your Veil, and they feed and you win the game. A lot of games don't even need to go to phase four of Sand King because people will feed so much just trying to get through his Sandstorm defensive towers. And the reason you're defending the mid tower and the safe lane tower is because this tower opens up access to this camp, this camp, and this bounty rune. So the enemy team will get three bounty rune spawns on every bounty if they get this tower. The mid tower gives access to this jungle, the triangle, and this jungle. So you don't want to lose that tower. This tower doesn't matter as much. So if you have to choose between your offlane tower, your mid tower, your safe lane tower, you absolutely defend your mid tower first 
then your safe lane tower. And you might be thinking, okay, Jenkins, but what about their safe lane tower? What about their mid tower? Don't we want to be aggressive and get those? Why would we delay the game if, let's say, the enemy team has a better late game than us? And the reason for that is because, number one, Sand King does this way better than any other hero in Dota. So you can very safely go to the most pressured place on the map where the enemy team has their spookiest heroes. Like, look at this. Four people, TP in, and all of a sudden, they have to leave. They can't do anything. 4v1. So after farming for a bit, after standing in front of towers for a while, usually what will happen is the enemy team loses their towers because they have to put way more heroes to deal with you than you have to put to get towers elsewhere. You'll get a huge amount of gold because a lot of the time they, once again, the math works out where if they have a bunch of heroes dealing with you and you don't, your teams can be farming better than them. And once you get the blink dagger, you want to tell your team to smoke up. You want to start playing aggressively on the map instead of defensively. You say, fuck your towers. And you essentially want to tell your team, okay, guys, I'm the counter initiator. I'm not the initiator. I'm the counter initiator. They start the fight and you turn it with a big epicenter. So I want to talk about how to play this hero in team fights a little bit because there are actually two ways of playing him. There's aggressively where you're a burrow strike initiator and your epicenter does not matter. And that is an incredible way to play him for pickoffs and starting fights. But if you don't need to be the hero that starts fights, then Sand King is an amazing counter initiator with epicenter. Then you're an epicenter. So aggressively, you are a burrow strike. Defensively, you are an epicenter. And the earlier on into the game it is, the better epicenter is, the more you want to be a defensive counter initiator. But the later the game goes where your damage doesn't matter as much, that's when you want to opt to just try to set up double burrows, for example, instead of, and, and just go for the good initiations as opposed to epicenter. I know a lot of people question like, okay, when do I go for epis? When do I go for these burrows? And that's that's how I usually decide. So in this situation, we have a Skywrath Mage. So I figured if I can't get off a good epicenter, it doesn't really matter. I saw a Magnus. That's an incredible hero to initiate on because he is in, super important for team fights. And uh, I didn't get to use Epi. I was telling my team in this situation I wanted to use Epicenter, but the opportunity presented itself where I went for the Magnus. So even this early on into the game, sometimes it's better you can just identify it like as a Sand King player. This is going to be like a good initiation. I need to take this Burl like if it's a really important target. But for the most part, you're not going to go wrong by just the closer you are to the early Veil timing, the more you want to use Epicenter. A lot of the time what you want to do is you want to play around your team, but you'll push in a wave adjacent to your team usually they'll be four manning somewhere else you push in a wave and then you go to your team you push in a wave you go to your team you push in the wave you go to your team and that's what, the reason you're the one pushing in the wave is because this hero is very hard to kill so you can go to the unsafe locations and push in waves but you want to make sure that you're going to your team immediately afterwards because it's not about your safety it's about your team safety if you're not at, at where, where your team is then the enemy team goes on your team they're going to die. So you want to make sure that you're getting to them ASAP. You'll go push one wave and then get to your team and you just relentlessly run at towers. That's about it. That's good diet seven up. 